Fluorescent in situ hybridization, or FISH, can be used in order to visualize specific locations on a chromosome and even detect irregularities in the DNA of the chromosome. The FISH assay is carried out in four main steps. First, the cell has to be fixated using formaldehyde, which causes extensive cross-linking between the proteins of the cell assay. Second, the probe is designed by first taking a DNA strand, which is complementary to the chromosomal region of interest. Then DNAs, which is an endonucleus, induces random nicks or cuts in this probe. Now DNA polymerase 1 can attach itself to the OH end of these nicks to begin translation and the incorporation of these fluorescently labeled nucleotides. In this way we can create a complementary labeled probe. This probe can then be amplified using PCR. Third, both probe and the chromosomal target DNA are denatured by heating up the cell to around 95 degrees Celsius. Fourth, and finally, hybridization can take place once the cell has cooled down, allowing the probe to specifically bind to the target DNA sequence. Once bonding has occurred, all probes not bound are washed away. It is vital to note that hybridization cannot happen unless the probe is precisely complementary to the target DNA sequence. In other words, any mutations can be detected because the chromosome will not be fluorescently marked since hybridization or attaching of the probe cannot take place. Now, as we can see in this case, the chromosome glows in a specific section, meaning that the probe has successfully bonded to the target DNA. Here on the other hand, the chromosome does not glow, meaning that a mutation has occurred in the chromosome on this specific location. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so that you can help me help more people in the future. Thank you very much. Until next time.